Hey everybody, for this next installment on the micrometer body, or we finished the body, the next part of the micrometer that I want to make for the corn is actually the thimble. So I've got the steel chucked up in the lathe right now. I'm going to break away and I'll, we'll do a little shop talk, a little uh, planning, and I'll show you a little bit about the, um, the planning process for what I plan to make. So I took the drawings and I, as you can see, I just drew them out larger for myself. And a lot of the drawings that from the the book are all in a lot of it is in um, uh, fractions. So because I'm, I have the luxury of a DRO on my lathe, I wrote them out in in decimal places. So it makes it easier. I don't have to stop and convert. And then after I drew the plans out, so to speak, in decimal, then the next thing I did was to lay out a little order of operations for myself. So just you know, step A, step B, step C. So, you know, it's kind of late already on Tuesday night, and I'll probably just get a, a couple of these steps done, but at least I can kind of check them off as I go and think about the progress uh, as as I, um, you know, make incremental progress on the work. So I'll bring you back when we get over to the lathe. So we're back at the lathe, and I've got that stock. This is that very inauspicious looking, but beautifully cutting and finishing inch and a half steel that I think Russ gave me, so thanks again, Russ. As you can see, this is the piece that I just parted off to make the body, and now it's the, the rest of it's gonna become the thimble. So I'll do a clean facing cut just to clear up anything there. You can actually see that there's a little bit of the overflow from the tap, but remember from the drawings, that's gonna be hollowed out um, one inch to fit the body so that's that's all going to be mil or uh, bored away eventually. I'm going to do the, most of the outside work first and then bore the center to the uh, one inch diameter. So I'll bring you back uh, first step, turn the overall diameter just a, uh, actually a little over an inch long just so it'll be clean where I parted at, but uh, one and five sixteenths. So I'll turn that down and then I'll turn down a, uh, a section of it to an inch and three sixteenths. That's um, you know the, the smaller part of the body. So I'll bring it back when I, I have a little bit more work done. I've got the lathe set at 600 RPM. And well, what the heck, let's go ahead and take a facing cut here. It's just uh, people seem to like that. So if you're using headphones, go ahead and turn your, turn your sound down right now. I'm about to start the lathe, but I've got it set at 600 RPM. I have a carbide in there. I'm going to put a little cutting oil on here just to be on the safe side, so sorry about that. So let's crank it up and... It's nice to take a facing cut like this because that way you can set your, your DRO zero. There we go. And as you know, come in a little bit from the center and then come bring it back out. You get the smoothest finish cutting from the center outward for some reason. So we got all faced off, looking good. I'm going to hit zero on my Z, and come around to the body. What up? My little process is I just bring it up. I can see it already picking up the oil there. I'm not actually cutting the steel yet, but I know I'm really close. So a little bit more, and I can kind of feel a teeny bit of resistance right there. So just for the beginning, I'm going to go ahead and set my X to zero so I can watch how much I'm taking off. I'm going to back it off a little bit. Let's take off about 25 thou. That seemed to work good for the initial cuts. And so I can't remember how I have this set, but... Yeah, there we go. I'm going to have the automatic feed in. It's one of my favorite features of this uh, Grizzly V4003G 
wave is that automatic feed. There we go. It gives a, as you can see, it's advancing very, very slowly. You can adjust that, of course, but I keep it on a very slow setting, and um, it gives a fantastic finish. Because as I've said, if you watched any of my videos for any length of time, you know I'm not in a rush. I like this is going to I'm trying to make the part for the first time, if I can. Alright, so I'll just go ahead and cut it off here and bring it back when we're a little closer to having this machine down the side. Okay, so in just a few minutes time, I've got the uh, body, or I keep saying the body, the, the thimble, the first part of the thimble, turned down to 1.3125 inch and 5 sixteenths and the next step will be I, let, I cleaned up a little bit more than I needed to um, the next step will be to cut a cut this down to an inch and 3 sixteenths um, for the the part that's where the numbers will be stamped so just a bunch more turning I'll show you the process um, I, Everybody seems to love that. So what I did after I got this to the that part to the final diameter, I, I set the DRO. Well, you can't tell now, but I set it to zero. Let me bring you in here. Let's show. All right. So crank it in. All right. It's through the camera, and I've been taking cuts about 33 or 35 thousandths deep. So here's I'm setting the cut depth. I'll go ahead and set it to 33. There we go. It'll change when I turn it on. So you can see I'm about 40 thousandths shy of the end there on the z-axis. So we'll crank it on, put a little oil on there, even though I'm using carbide, and then engage the power feed. And it's hard. The handle is turning very really slowly. Again, still cutting at about 600 RPM. And this this part is only uh, 500 and uh, 5625 on the Z. So I'll let it feed for a while. It's about halfway there right now. So what I do is at 300 now. I'll get it to about 5.5. I'll put the last little bit on myself. You know, about 4.3, 4.7. Well, I'm watching the Z countdown. So it's 5.2, 4, all right, I'm at 5.5, going to 5625. Okay, so that much of it gets turned down a bit. So I back it off again. Got the auto feed on. Take it out. I crank in another 33,000. So we do like 66 on the X. Again, that's the diameter. So between the pen and the 16. And I'll engage the auto feed again and I'll lather, rinse, repeat until I get it to the finished thing. Okay, so coming back, it's just a couple of minutes later. I really only had to remove a, an eighth of an inch going from one and five sixteenths on the larger machine diameter down to one and three sixteenths. So got that part of the body, I keep saying body, the thimble done. So it's roughed out essentially. The next thing to do, and I'll do it tomorrow, is to cut the 30 degree angle across the base and to bore the one inch, I'm trying to decide which one I want to do first, but I'll figure that out tomorrow. That's a nice thing about taking things bit by bit. And one, one good thing about boring it out first it would be I would know <clears throat> how, how much to take the 30 degree angle down to, in other words, because you don't want to make a super sharp edge there. Um, so I guess I'll probably do that first. So bore it out to one inch and then cut the 30 degree angle. Then uh, knurl, engrave it, and cut the groove for the ball bearings. 
All right, the next thing I want to do on making the thimble, I thought I would go ahead and put in the parting line where I'm going to cut off the the, the uh, thimble assembly. So I'm not going to part it off obviously now because it's not done. But I thought putting in the, the parting line and reducing the diameter over here a little bit would help with the knurling because this, this part this section of the thimble is only going to be three-eighths of an inch from this line here. So I'll, par I'll put in the parting tool a little ways and I'll reduce the diameter here. Then I'll go ahead and knurl it because knurling now, once you have the, the only the diameter that's going to be knurled proud, so to speak, will make it easier and cleaner. And then I can clean up those edges and the, then start the boring process. So, and the last thing I'll do is put the taper and the um, index lines on there. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do, I put the parting tool in and I line the blade with the face of the part so that I know I've got it square. And I'm just backing it off here. This is going to be a little tricky to do one-handed, but I'm going to line this thing up with the edge. And what I do... I'll just have to kind of demonstrate it a little bit. But what I, I do is I take a square, which of course I don't have. I put it away. Let me grab it. I take a tiny little machinist square and I hold it like so against the part, like that, right on the edge. And then I just move the blade over to uh, line it up. So I'm going to do that. I'll do that off camera because I need both hands. And then I'll set my, my z-axis DRO to zero, and then I'll move it over 0.375, and I'll go in a little ways and then reduce the diameter a little bit uh, over on the left, left side of that, and then I'll be able to knurl. I'll bring you back when I do the knurling. All right, now I've got the little shoulder cut where the, the knurl is going to be, and I've got my little homemade knurling tool set in place, and it's just barely tight on there. So I've got it, the lathe is already set at a slow speed. Before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and drizzle some cutting fluid on there. And I'm going to start it. And I've got, this is real high tech, I use little vice grips to um, increase the tension. So I'm just going to do a, f a minute of knurling here. And I'll show you how that, how that works. So started. I'm going to use my hand here. Just increasing the tension. You can hear it and you can see it a little bit now that my knurling wheels are only a quarter inch wide so I'm going to have to move the carriage over a little bit to get full coverage and move it and I'll just tighten it a little bit. Just keep it running and move it over a little ways. I'm just using a straight knurl here. My idea is I think I'll do a straight knurl on this part and maybe a crosshatch knurl on the end of the, uh, the handle, the, the adjusting screw. So a little bit more. Tighten it up one more time here. You can really feel the tension. Move it over. A little tighter on this side. About as tight as it's going to get, and that should make a nice knurl there. I'm going to stop it and just feel the wheel for a second. You would not want to stick your hand in there while the lathe is running, but I'm going to stick it in there. Let's see, yeah, I can feel a nice knurl on there, it doesn't take much really. So let's go and just give it a little bit more just to be on the safe side because. Why not? Move it over a little ways. Go back. This can't see much. I, what I did was I, I used a Sharpie marker to mark the blue areas. That's all the, the place where it's not. Uh, let me go ahead and I'll just take this and stop it. No, no, stop the lathe. Let me un loosen the knurling tool and move it out of the way and let's see what kind of knurl you can't really tell now because it's coated with oil let me wipe it off a little bit 
Oh yeah, that's going to be real nice. Check that out. See that everybody? Very nice knurling pattern. So what I'm going to do now, and now that I, I'll take the knurling tool out, I'm going to use my little um, diamond tool cutter. I'm going to put a little teeny bevel on either side of this just for a nice touch so there, there won't be a sharp edge. And it'll, it, I'll bring you back when I got that done or as I'm doing it. And you'll see how much nicer that looks. So from here, I'll do that. And the next thing I want to do is go ahead and bore, start the drilling and boring process to, to bore this out to one inch on the inside. And then I'll cut that 30 degree taper at some point. So I'll bring you back for the next segment with the uh, dressing up the edges with the diamond tool. Hey, one thing I thought of as I get ready to, there's nothing very exciting about the whole drilling and boring out process to the one inch diameter. But one thing I did want to stress that even there's a uh, even though there is a hole there already left over from <clears throat> making the the uh, drilled and tapped hole on the body, it's always a good idea to go ahead and center drill anyway because you want your drills to start straight. So I'm going to center drill in there and have a good place. Oh, you see it jumping around and stuff. I don't know what all it's hitting. This work from the original hole. Now I can make a contact, and I'm just, you, you see the, the handle here, I'm just feeding it ever so gently. I don't want to jam it in there and let it take the wrong tack, so to speak. But I'm just making sure I got a good center draw. I'll go in about 100 thou, just so that there's a good center spot for the drills. And I'll start out with a small one, you know, something around the size of a quarter inch, and work my way up. So, that what do you call it, progressive drilling or something, but anyway, that way it'll have a good chance of being straight. Obviously the boring process um, will afford a ton of control, and that's always recommended for trying to make an accurate hole, but uh, the drilling will, you know, speed things up a little bit. So I'll, next, I'll spend the next few minutes drilling out and getting ready for the boring process, boring it out to win it. A little gratuitous drilling out. I'm into the large size drills now. These are the ones I did that four way grind on. They really do produce a nice chip. I got the setup for boring and I've bored it out. I've got about 10 thou to go. What I've done is taken small bites so far with the the boring setup i used the shortest stoutest little boring bar that i could use that would would give me clearance inside there and i've got my body to ready to test fit so i'm gonna about i'm gonna take another cut i'm gonna show you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna turn the camera off because i don't want to botch this up and try to be filming while i'm and explaining while I'm doing this, but I'll bring you back after I've got it done. I'll, I'll start the cut with the uh, with the camera running, but I get it close, and I've already set the Z where it needs to be. So right now we're at 81 thou away from the uh, the edge of the thimble, and I'm going to crank in. I've got a 10 thou cut to make. Okay, so I'm going to crank in 10 thou, and I've been with my the cuts I've been taking it's been a little large so to speak like if I put in 10 I might get 11 so that's kind of what I'm banking on because I want a little bit maybe a thousandth of an inch clearance I want it to be in a really nice fit there with the thimble so what I'm going to do is leave that there I've got the tension tightened up I tightened up the screw on the the uh, cross slide there I'm going to start the cut. I'm going to zero out my X um, as soon as the cut starts. And I use the power feed like I was doing before. So I get a nice smooth, it's, it's beautiful, the finish that you get with that smooth power feed. I'll start that all. And then I'm only going to go in about a quarter of an inch, maybe less, just a couple hundred thou, so that I can do two things. I will, or three things, I guess. I will take this and deburr the edge. So so my, my readings are accurate. I'll also test fit to see if the body actually fits in or not. And I will use my telescoping gauge and uh, calipers to, to, to measure the actual uh, internal diameter. So I'm going to get things started here and I'll bring you back 
in when I have things under control. I'm, I'm cutting at about 600 RPM. So there's the wave on. Alright, I'm going to cut the, cut the film off now. And bring it back in. Alright, I started the cut, got the automatic feed on. I'm going to zero out my X. Now, I kind of put my hand here too. Got about 70,000 worth of cut so far. And 150. What I do is I'm just going to cut the power off there at 200 thou. Take the power feed off. Crank it out. And then deburr it. Deburr the edge there. Brush it off. Cut the power off. I also have a rag here to wipe off any grease or dust particles. So the cut is only two, 200 thou deep. So let's see if the body itself fits in there. Oh, it's just starting to fit. And it's, yeah, it seems really nice. It's not loose or anything. So I think I'm right on. I will measure this. But I'm going to cut the film off so I can finish this up. I'll bring it back when I have this done. Okay, I couldn't be any more happy with the fit. This is, I've got the, the, the body is inside the thimble now. There's probably about, sorry about the camera work, there's probably about a half a thou fit. I mean, just slight wiggle to it. A smooth, very smooth fit. No excess slop there at all. It's going to be nice. I think it's going to be perfect. So really pleased with how that came out. Um, just careful measuring. I, I only had, I drilled it out, I'm trying to think, remember, I uh, drilled it out last night to... I want to say about 13, no, 7 eighths. I drilled it out to 7 eighths. So I only had to take an eighth off. Um, so And I took several cuts of, uh, first couple cuts, about uh, 15 thou, and just keep kept working my way down. My mentor, Fred, taught me a technique with the lathe that I, I think about all the time. It's like when you're getting close and you're you're at the point where three more cuts might do it, uh, divide your total by three and you know take a cut and see then measure it again and hopefully then um, you'd have two more cuts of exactly the same but if there's a little bit of if there's spring in your cutter or whatever you know a couple thou plus or minus you can adjust as you're getting closer I, I, I don't know I'm sure there's a name for that that prof professional machinists use but I always think about that and that's what I try to adjust so make my last three cuts um, and I just adjust you know plus or minus a thou or two each time um, so real pleased about how that came out and it's uh, I got enough time tonight this is Thursday night for those of you keeping track um, I'm going I, I go ahead and I can set the the uh, cross slide and do the 30 degree cut on uh, on the outside here I'll use my carbide cutter and the um, the compound. I'll set this for a 30 degree angle. I'll check it and I'll be the the part in case I wasn't clear before the part I'm a little concerned about or I want to be careful about is I don't want to take the 30 degree taper down so close to the inside diameter where I'm creating a knife edge here. See right now I've got a nice thick edge and you know, you just don't want it. it, it knife edge would be bad for a couple reasons. It's not like it's going to cut anybody when it's sitting on side on top of the the body, but it's just um, to me it seems like it could break. You know, it's a weaker part that way. Um, obviously, uh, I want this to be the 30 degree angle wide enough so that the engraving marks are legible. But I'll cover that in detail in in the next segment or two. Preparing to put the bevel on the thimble, I wanted to make sure that the distance is at least something like I have on my micrometers, and I measured it, and that's about 200 thousandths of an inch, just in z-axis, <laughs> excuse me, z-axis distance, if you will. So what I did, it's probably a little, oh, a little hard to see, but I, I blued and marked out 200 thou, just so I could get an idea of what would be a good kind of sweet spot for the bevel. And also I set my compound at 30 degrees, so I'm not quite sure um, 
if that's going to be the perfect thing. I'm going to do a little double checking here before I make any cuts um, and I will keep you posted as I go. Okay, just to wrap this up, I did take one more cut um, because I mic'd the, the lip and it was about 40 thou. So I mic'd it and uh, like I said, at 40 thou I decided to go in, advance the cutter in 5 thou more, take another pass at the 15 degree and then I put a fine file on that just to take off the tool marks so it'll, the scribing would be a little clearer. But that is a really good fit and I'm thinking that's going to look really nice. Let me rotate it around so we can see the the index line. Where'd that go? There it is. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. Alright, looking good. So the next step is scribing the, the 50 engraved marks. Next thing I needed to do with the thimble where is it? There it is. Is to bore a groove inside in the rear portion of it for the 3 16 inch ball bearings that will hold the tension on. So here I've ground a 3 32nd inch radius and I'm using a Starrett radius gauge that I got this set off of eBay to check it and I'll set it up and groove, put the groove in. Not much to see there, it's just a, it goes a 31 thousandths deep and that's all there is to that. The last thing I need to do for the thimble before I part it off is to engrave 50 lines. If you want to see a good video about the engraving process, look up Winky's Workshop on YouTube. And he uses a setup similar to what I'm about to show, and he'll go into a lot more detail. He actually has a three-part series about making lathe dials. But first I want to show, this is the, uh, the Guy Letard rotary table plans that he markets, that he took off of the, uh, or the adapted from the George Thomas design. Here's a little scriber that I made from 3 16 inch tool steel that I used to mark my, my rotary table when I made that probably 15 or 20 years ago. I made a little adapter using half inch square steel that I bored a hole through for the 3 16 inch and I've got a couple set screws so I can put it in the lathe and use it as my engraving tool. I also wanted to show what I've got next here. I've got a 150 tooth table saw blade and this is something that Winky's Workshop uses, a set, the same setup he uses in his, basically, same idea anyway. It's a great way uh, for, to, to engrave something in a lathe. In my case, since I have a gunsmith lathe, I can hold the stem in the, uh, in the spider portion of the lathe, of the headstock. And so I've marked it out. I've used this not long ago I used this for making my um, dials for my Gingri lathe that also had a, a 20 thread per inch um, lead screw on for the, the vertical adjustment on the, on the head of the Gingri shaper. So you can, you can see very clearly what I did. I just drew out where I've got my longer lines, my tens, my fives, and each third hole would be the uh, individual one. But I'll be setting this up in the lathe and making my engravings today and then the, all I got to do is part off the thimble and that'll be done. Just wrapping up here, I just finished marking, indexing the 50 lines on the thimble and I'm pretty happy that it came out good. I, I went ahead and I don't I didn't mention this before, but I made a, a 15 degree angle there instead of 30. So I had more real estate to use for cleaning up. And here is my little setup that I used, just like Winky's workshop. So I'll clean this up now. All I gotta do is clean it up, part it off. All right, folks, this is gonna be the declaring victory segment on the uh, thimble. Here it is. I just parted it off, cleaned it up. I just had to deburr the inside, but it parted off clean. I haven't filed it or anything like that. You can see the little groove that I cut for the ball bearing inside, that for the little spring that will, will keep the thimble in place. You can, let's see, you can see the, the uh, 50 index marks. They didn't come out quite perfect. They're actually, they're a little better than they look on the video. There's one section, like the first five or so that I made, um, didn't come out real good, honestly. I was, I was getting my technique back, but 
you know, I ha actually um, I went over them again so that I would at least have the lines there. So I'm not not exactly proud of those couple, but the rest of it looks good, and I'll be able to stamp the numbers on. I think I'll have to I'll be able to use the pillar tool. I need to make a, like a one inch arbor to hold this in, and um, maybe like in a five C collet block or something. And then I can just use it in the in the pillar tool with the little stamp guide that I made earlier in that series. So here's the the part that gets bolted onto the corn itself. There's the index line, that fat index line that I scratched in it. I'll show you how they fit together. And they fit together really good with two hands. There you go. So it's not loose. Um, really pleased basically with how that, that came out. And I like the single row knurl. Like I said, when I make the actual adjusting screw, maybe I'll use the diamond knurl. I'm not quite sure. I have to think about that a little bit. So that would be the next thing to make is the adjusting screw that goes in there with a 7 16 inch 20 thread. And it has the cross drilling for the spring and the 3 16 inch stainless. I'm going to use stainless steel balls. You don't have to, but I have a bunch of them. So... There we go. Victory declared. That was like an entire evening's, um, a week's worth of evenings of hobby time, just an hour or so at a time, plus Saturday morning to finish up with the indexing and the, um, and the parting off, and the groove and the parting off. So thanks again, folks. Oh, I meant to make a go for it sign. Darn. That, um, really appreciate. If you haven't seen lately, um, Rustinox, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I hope so. He built a, an air-powered steam, or not steam engine, an air-powered beam engine, and um, I really like his motivational attitude of just go for it and, you know, try to make the parts. You know, that holds especially true for me because these are basically just a hunk of uh, scrap steel that I turned into some useful parts, so... The, the best is yet to come when we get the whole machine done, but one more step in the right direction. Thanks again, folks. I appreciate you, and I will keep you posted with updates.